Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And as of filming this intro, this will be video two of two from me today. Just lots of deadlines falling into the same space. So check out my channel or my blog. It'll have all the info. This one is for the Waffle Flower March release. And it is a good one. There are many good things. It's very floral, which immediately I was like, yes, love. And there's another stencil set for the po postage collage, can't speak, um, set that came out originally way back when. It's been over a year. I forget when the first set came out. I will have a playlist linked at the end um, of this video in the end screen of all the videos I've done so far using the different postage collage sets because there's the wafer, the original wafer die, which I have in my absolute disaster of a desk. So there's the original. It was the postage A2 sized um, and then the little like kind of companion dies, which I've actually never used. I just, I use this one over and over again. Anyway, there are many, many, many um, coordinating stencil sets that have been released thus far. And I actually shared a graphic on my blog. I think that was with last month's. No, when I did the lucky one not too long ago. Um, if I remember, I'll post it again in my blog post of what's been released and then what Waffle Flower has planned just to give people kind of a hint of what's going to come out over the next like year or so. And anyway, this one came out. This is the Wild Fla Postage Collage Wildflower Stencil Set. Love it. So I used that. I used another stencil set, layering stencil set that came out. I did splattering all the things. So like I said, I will have links to everything I used as well as to the new release in the description box below the video. My links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on my links and place an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. That's what helps pay the bills, keep the lights on, the heater going in my garage, etc. And then um, I'll have the, the playlist linked at the end of the video. And then I also have a link to my Instagram because I have a giveaway tied to these cards for this release. So I will link to my Instagram as well. Come follow me over there. And yeah, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made these cards. So the first thing I did was die cut some smooth white cardstock using that postage collage wafer die. And then I have my waffle flower grip mats here. This big size, um, currently not available, but I'll link to the second biggest size, which is the size that fits in a standard Misty. Um, but yeah, grip mat just helps hold the cardstock in place and the stencils in place. Love. And I put the die cut pieces onto the grip mats and then I'm going to start with the stenciling. So this stencil set, this is the Waffle Flower Postage Collage Wildflower stencil set. And it's got three, three layers. I think it's three layers. <laughs> we'll see as the video progresses. <laughs> anyway, I've got the first layer on there. And then I'm using some Altenew Fresh Dye inks and my Waffle Flower blending brushes. These are the, like, kind of my most used, which is the One Plus uh, shader brushes. And I decided to do um, three different colors as, you know, the focus of my flowers. So I used, um, I started with Buttercream, Pink Crystal, and Water Hyacinth for um, this first layer here. And just kind of did like a light, a light little blend because we're going to build it up with the other stencils. This was super, super easy. And I was just, as I was doing this, I was like, this is why I love these little blending brushes so much. Just smaller brushes in general. How, you know, I never thought like when they first started, like brands first started releasing them, I was like, really, really? Like, do we need these? Oh yeah, we do. They, they come in so handy with stuff like this. So I can do, you know, targeted areas of blending, etc. And I just love it. So anyway, second stencil. I'm going in with three darker shades. So now I'm using uh, Warm Sunshine. That's my second shade darker of the yellow. And then Mauve, which is the second shade darker of the like pinky purpley shades. And then I'll go in with Alpine Aster. 
as my kind of purpley, purpley blue shade and just working my way um, around. And then for those little flower centers, this is where I pulled out my, my tiny, tiny brushes. These are the Waffle Flower Zero Plus shader brushes. And for the flower centers, I used um, paper bag ink. And then the final stencil, so yeah, it was three stencils. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the greenery, which I started with, or the two have flower centers. So that was that paper bag color again. And then for the greenery, I used um, matcha tea green ink. And then I'm going to go in with uh, swamp green, which is just a little bit darker, just to give, again, just that little bit of definition. You could always skip stuff like this and just do it all, you know, as one shade. It's fine, but it's kind of fun to, you know, start mixing it up, adding those little bits to just step it up a bit. So added a bit of that swamp green. And then as you saw, like I just keep, I do one, move it over to the next one simple just simple so after i had everything blended this is where i start going in with the uh this is the postage collage clear stamp set this is the one that came out like originally so i just used little my little acrylic blocks and i stamped the like the forever image onto the one with uh berry licious ink and then everything else i'm stamping with um simon says stamps intense black ink and i don't know what it is or why it is but this is one of my favorite parts when these postage collage sets is stamping all the little like denominations and the cancellation marks and everything else it's just it's fun you know like I don't know I just I enjoy it I enjoy kind of like canceling the stamps and adding these little elements and kind of in a sense like purposely messing messing it all up you know I don't know I just I have fun with it <laughs> So went around and stamped all those um, all those little bits here and there just to make sure that all, all the all the stamps I created, you know, were uh, were canceled. And then um, I took some Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I put that onto my grip mats. And then I'm using the new Wildflowers stencil um, Wildflower stencil set. This is another layering set, but this one is meant to create just like a full A2 card background. And I've talked about this before with a lot of the Waffle Flower um, stencil sets. They have um, guides on them. Like you can see it in this um, on the screen here is they're at, the colors are actually like listed with each little like section of flowers here. So if you want to follow that, um, it's just kind of nice. It just, it'll tell you like light green, dark green, da, 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 whatever. I didn't follow that this time, but I just thought I would point that out because I do like when brands do things like that. Cause I was like, sometimes I just don't want to think, you know, tell me what to do. <laughs> so I just did my own thing though, using the colors I was already using, but I went a little darker. So I was using like the warm sunshine. Um, I, I started with the warm sunshine, the Alpine Aster and the mauve color. And then I want to shade darker with the second stencil. So that was um, Crystal Violet, Berry Licious, and then I'll do um, Caramel Toffee. Because like I've always mentioned, when you're dealing with any cardstock other than white, whatever it is you're applying to it, whether it's inks, like dye inks or alcohol markers or whatever, they are going to look different than they would on white cardstock. So it's always something to keep in mind. So I went a teensy bit darker just so things show up a little bit more. But this is all going to be just like my background. But this could totally have been like a card on its own. But I just thought it went so nicely with the, the postage stamps that that's why I pulled it out. So for my third layer, this is all the greenery. And I started with the smaller brush and then I was like, wait a minute, I don't need that. I can use a normal size brush and just do the whole thing. So I just grabbed one of my Waffle Flower blending brushes and I'm going in with the matcha tea color and adding that all over everything. And then I'll go back in with that um, one plus like smaller brush and add the, the swamp green, the shade darker, just here and there. Again, it just gives it that little extra something. So went in, did that, and then like I've been doing, I just repeat the exact same thing on the um, second card front. 
And normally, which you guys see me do, I would be doing the insides of my cards as well with this, just, you know, a lighter hand, etc. But I had other plans. That's why I didn't do this time. <laughs> but you could totally do how I show and just use, you know, whatever little ink is left on your stencil and your brush without re-inking. And then you just lightly blend it onto the inside of the card to so get more of a hint of the pattern without like full like ink saturation. So with the last stencil, that was all the flower center. So I used that paper bag color. After all that was done, I trimmed these down to just slightly smaller than an A2 card front. Also, I trimmed them down because they actually weren't straight to begin with. They were just like random pieces in my stash. So I trimmed them down a bit. And then the postage um, collage, I snipped all of these apart with scissors. I've shown in like most of my other videos. I just keep it all like as one panel which is just nice to, you know, add a bit of baker's twine, add a sentiment, call it a day. But this time I trimmed them apart because I wanted to put a few on the outside of the cards and then I was going to save a couple for the inside, which is why I didn't stencil the inside of the card bases. So I figured out my layout and I'm going to leave a bit of space for a sentiment. And once I have my layout figured out, I of course pulled out baker's twine. So once I had the layout, it gave me kind of a visual clue as to where I wanted to put my baker's twine. So I just wrapped that around the card front and as always grabbed my reverse tweezers to hold the knot in place so I can sit and fiddle and get the bow the way I want it. I zhuzh that a little bit, pull it tight, remove the tweezers, pull it tight again, and then just trim off the excess. And then to adhere um, these individual postage stamps, I'm going to use uh, foam squares. So thin ones for a couple of them, just to pop them up just a little bit, you know, just, just a little bit of dimension. And then the ones that layer on top, I'm going to use like regulation size, you know, standard thickness foam squares. So those are popped up a little bit more. So just kind of eyeing where everything, you know, where all the foam squares need to go around the baker's twine, the other um, little postage stamps, etc. So that everything just kind of layers nicely on top of each other. And then once I've got um, everything adhered, I of course repeat the exact same thing on the second card front. And then once that everything's in place, this is where I'm going to add the splatter because you know it's coming. <laughs> So I put the, the card fronts into my splat box as well as the individual little uh, postage stamps. And the first splatter is my like go-to, the Picket Fence um, Paper Splatter Watercolor in Liquid White Snowflake because it's shimmery and fabulous and I love it. It's very subtle until the light hits it and then you see it and that's it's just fun. So you can kind of go a little more or at least I can go a little more heavy handed with that one. So shook that up, put it on my palette, use my fan brush and then just splattered this all over all over the card fronts, all over those little individual stamps. And then I pulled out black soot distress paint because there ain't, oh, there's nothing better than black splatter. Never thought I'd be someone who's like so into it because especially black splatter, the splatter in general intimidated me, you know, way back in the day. I don't remember when it was when I started getting into it, but yeah, I like me some black splatter. So added that all over as well. The thing to always remember with distress paint and just especially the black soot because it is so pigmented is to immediately clean your brush etc. Afterwards this stuff does dry permanently. So as soon as I'm done clean off my brush wipe off my palette everything's good to go and then I set those aside to dry and then for my sentiments I'm using the new full bloom sentiment set and I just have a scrap of black cardstock and I lined up the sentiment I wanted to use and I used my anti-static powder tool on the cardstock and that just helps prevent the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image. And then I inked up the stamp and stamped it with just some white pigment ink and then rotated the cardstock, repeated the process, coated everything with some detail white embossing powder and then melt that with my heat tool until everything is smooth, shiny, melted goodness. And then once everything is melted, you let it cool off for a few seconds. And then I'm going to use just my microfiber cloth to rub on the cardstock to remove all that excess anti-static powder because it obviously shows up very well on dark cardstock. So wipe all that off. And then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer die to die cut these sentiments. And I'm just going to tape that into place with little bits of washi tape so that that doesn't shift when I run it through my die cut machine. So after I got my sentiments um, die cut, 
I can then um, adhere them to the card fronts with the same just little foam squares there. So get those popped into place and then I can stick that onto the card. And I've talked about this before. I usually, I either cover the sentiment or wait to add the sentiment when I'm planning on doing like splatter, things like that. So I don't get splatter all over the sentiment because I want that to remain like legible because it would just be my luck. You know, I'd get black splatter on it or something and then it would make the word like inappropriate or illegible. But in my, in my case, it would probably just make something inappropriate. <laughs> so anywho, after I did all of that, on the insides of my cards, so my card bases are top folding A2 white note cards. And I'm going to stamp another sentiment from that same um, stamp set with just that intense black ink. So I'll get that stamped into place on both of the insides of these cards. And then once those are stamped, I'm going to adhere those two remaining um, individual little postage stamps onto the insides of these cards to finish them off. So I'm just going to adhere them into place with Craft Tacky Glue. And then um, let the glue dry. Always let the glue dry. That, and I just, I say that because I'm someone, I just, I don't more often than not it's just it's better just wait a couple minutes wouldn't kill you anyway let the glue dry and then I flip these cards over and use the edge of the card base as a guide and just trim off the the bits that are hanging off the edge and then um, reinforce that fold with my little teflon bone folder so get those you know creased proper folded secure etc and then to pop the card fronts onto the card bases I'm using some big mama foam tape just gives it a, again a little bit of a dimension but not you know a ton of lift so got those adhered onto the card bases and then as my final little bit of embellishment I pulled out these uh, waffle flower unicorn candy dots the colors just kind of worked with the colors I used so these are self-adhesive so you just peel them off and like peel and stick love it so stuck a few of those into place to just finish these cards off and that was it so like I mentioned in the intro um, this is part of a Instagram like giveaway, etc. So I will have a link to my Instagram like I always do in the description box below the video. I will have a link to the new release. I'll have a link to my blog post if you want to hop over there. The blog post has like pictures, picture links, etc. It's a little easier to navigate. But yeah, all that info will be in the description box below for anyone who is interested. And as always, Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. It legit helps. Thumbs upping and commenting. It just, it tells the robot overlords that you guys like what you see. It'll keep kind of feeding you the same content. It helps out my channel, all the things. And I, I do, I appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you. And yeah, I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.